2. Subject, Test Systems. Dear Madam Slash Sirs. In 2007 I joined the struggle of the disabled in Israel. On July 10, 2018, I joined the Nitgaber movement, Transparent Disabled People. In the movement we try to promote the rights of the transparent disabled, that is, people like me who suffer from serious health problems that are not visibly visible on the outside. This lack of external visibility causes very severe discrimination against us, and even compared to other disabled people. Our movement has a website on the internet, built for us in Hebrew. The reference to our website in Hebrew, movement we will overcome. I used automatic translation services to translate the website into 66 different languages, and below are the links to translating the website into the various languages. 1. Reference to Uzbek translation, Nitgaber Harakat. 2. Reference to Ukrainian translation. 3. Reference to translation into Urdu, Nitgaber movement. 4. Reference to the Azri translation, Nitgaber Harakati. 5. Reference to Italian translation, Movimento Nitgaber. 6. Reference to Indonesian translation, Movement Nigaber. 7. Reference to translation into Icelandic, Nitgaber movement. 8. Reference to translation into Albanian, Nitgaber move. 9. Reference to Amharic translation, Nitgaber movement. 10. Reference to English translation, Nitgaber movement. 11. Reference to Estonian translation, Nitgabri movement. 12. Reference to Armenian translation, Nitgaber movement. 13. Reference to translation into Bulgarian, Nitgabarsko movement. 14. Reference to Bosnian translation, Nitgaber Pokrit. 15. Reference to translation into Burmese, Nitgaber movement. 16. Reference to Belarusian translation. 17. Reference to Bengali translation. Nitgaber movement. 18. Reference to Basque translation, Nitgaber move. 19. Reference to translation into Georgian, Nitgaber movement. 20. Reference to German translation, Nitgaber Bugung. 21. Reference to the Danish translation, Nitgaber movement. 22. Reference to translation into Dutch, Nitgaber movement. 23. Reference to Hungarian translation, Nitgaber Mosgolem. 24. Hindi translation reference, Nitgaber movement. 25. Reference to Vietnamese translation, Phong Nitgaber Nitgaber. 26. Reference to Tajik translation, Movement. 27. Reference to Turkish translation, Nigaber Gakiti. 28. Reference to translation into Turkmen, Nitgaber Kihihi. 29. Reference to Telugu translation, Nitgaber Movement. 30. Reference to Tamil translation, Nightcapper Movement. 31. Reference to the Greek translation. Kapanuatamu Alpha Nitgaber. 32. Reference to Yiddish translation, Nitgeburnt Kum and Gong. 33. Reference to Japanese translation, Movement. 34. Reference to Latvian translation, Nitgabara Movement. 35. Reference to Lithuanian translation, Nitgabero Judumas. 36. Reference to Mongolian translation. 37. Reference to Malay translation, Nitgaber Movement. 38. Reference to translation into Maltese, Movement Nitgaber. 39. Reference to the Macedonian translation, Nitgaber movement. 40. Reference to Norwegian translation, Nitgaber movement. 41. Reference to Nepali translation, Nitgaber movement. 42. Reference to Swahili translation, Nitgaber movement. 43. Reference to Sinhalese translation, Nitgaber business. 44. Reference to Chinese translation. 45. Reference to translation into Slovenian, Nitgaber motion. 46. Reference to Slovak translation, Nitgebersk nudi. 47. Reference to Spanish translation, Movimiento Nigaber. 48. Reference to Serbian translation. 49. Reference to Arabic translation, Movement Nitgaber. 50. Reference to Pashto translation, Nitgaber a movement. 51. Reference to translation into Polish, Rusz Nitgaber. 52. Reference to Portuguese translation, Movimento Nitgaber. 53. Reference to translation into Filipino, Movement in Nitgabe. 54. Reference to Finnish translation, Nitgabrin like. 55. Reference to Persian translation, a Movement Nitgaber. 4. The therapeutic setting I am in. Association, Reut, Hostel, Avivit. 
Ha Vivit St. 6. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. ISRAELL, zip code 9650816. The phone numbers in the hostel offices, 972-2-6432551. Or, 972-2-6428351. The email address of the hostel, avivit6 at barak.net.il. The social worker from the hostel team, who works in my apartment, Mrs. Sarah Stora, 972-55-6693370. 5. Below are three examples of areas in which I need urgent assistance and hope that approval to receive special services from the National Insurance Institute can help in one way or another. I, around the beginning of December 2018, I heard in the media that a new law was passed at the time, which requires anyone who employs a worker in their home who helps with cleaning or other household chores to sign an orderly employment contract with the worker and report it to the authorities. I would like to point out that due to my physical disability since 2002 or so I have had a maid come to me who does cleaning work for a fee, however during this period I moved between several residential apartments, and the question arises as to whether this is relevant to the matter. And I invited the maid from time to time as needed, no she had fixed working hours or days, and the frequency of her arrival also changed from time to time. In the last year, I am writing this on October 1, 2022, it usually comes about once a month. My financial plight as someone who lives on a disability pension does not allow me to order her more often, although sometimes there is a need for it. After many inquiries I made on the matter, it became clear to me that as long as I am not entitled to special services I will not be able to regulate her social status and rights, and this is contrary to false claims on the part of the National Insurance Institute which claims that there is, as it were, a possibility to regulate the matter of employing the maid even now even without entitlement to services special. I would like to point out that from my acquaintance with her I know that this is a woman of the day, and this is also something that should be taken into account. The housekeeper in question, Mrs. Yehuda Coel, 972-50-2169965. 2. I am a 50-year-old insured of Clalit Health Services from the Jerusalem area, and due to my physical disability, I find it more and more difficult to get to clinics for medical examinations, if and when there is a need for it. I'm still trying to find out if the health insurance fund I'm a member of can actually approve such a thing, and if such a social right does exist. At this stage I do not know if the special services allowance from the National Insurance Institute has or has nothing to do with this. I will note that in my case there are two additional difficulties. The first difficulty, I live on a very low income, a disability allowance from the National Insurance Institute. Therefore, a high payment for such tests or medical treatments privately would be very problematic for me in any case. The second difficulty, I don't have a car or a driver's license, and due to my medical condition and the medications I take, I will never be able to get a license either, and therefore getting to different places is only possible using public transport, something that, as I said, I am having more and more difficulty with. Of course, these two difficulties must also be taken into account. 3. I have been taking psychiatric medications for many years, and in recent years an unbearable reality has arisen in which psychiatrists at mental health centers have stopped monitoring the psychiatric medications, I know this will sound kind of absurd, but unfortunately this is the reality I encounter time and time again. But since I live on a very low income, a disability allowance from the National Insurance Institute, going to doctors privately is impossible for me. But today there is no other alternative, since even the psychiatrists at the mental health stations are no longer an address for me, for two reasons. The first reason, a problematic approach to treatment, whenever they arrive at the station, the mentally injured are automatically treated as people who are also mentally impaired, which leads to a total lack of listening on the part of the doctors. From the moment I arrived at the station, the doctors would start from the assumption that they would know exactly what problems I was suffering from without getting to know me even a superficial or minimal acquaintance. This resulted time and time again in wrong treatment practices applied to me and also my inability to cooperate with the disparaging attitude that came with it. And what's more, even in cases where the clinic staff or the doctors knew me, the treatment still didn't change, which prevented any possibility of treating or helping, and also caused constant clashes with the staff who supposedly, treated, or tried, supposedly, to help. Of course, what happened in these cases was not help at all but continuous oppression with which I did not agree, and even today I do not agree to cooperate. Every time I witnessed this, I would leave the same, tracking allegedly in order to prevent further damage and unnecessary mental anguish under the guise of help or treatment, so to speak. 
I know that this is a generalization, but in light of many years of experience and a very thorough and comprehensive examination of the matter, it was not possible to reach any other conclusion or insight. The second reason, physical health condition, at the beginning of 1998 I had a work accident at the Larum Hotel in Jerusalem, the name of the hotel was changed over the years, and today it is called the Inbal Hotel, where I worked at the time for about three months as part of a project of the Elwin Israel Organization, and since then I developed a series of physical problems, none of which the National Insurance Institute recognizes. Also, there is currently no other entity or government office that recognizes this harm. Since that accident, my condition has slowly but continuously and consistently worsened, and today I have reached a situation where even the physical arrival at the mental health stations is a difficult and increasingly problematic matter for me. A general health insurance fund of which I am a member, and also the Ministry of Health claim that they have no solution for this situation and that they do not have a psychiatrist service that works at home. In the months of the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, I tried to find a solution in a slightly different way in the cold at a pharmacologist. But it turned out that the pharmacologist I visited could only partially help, and that since he is not a psychiatrist he had no ability to help me sort out the psychiatric medications I am taking. Moreover, it became clear to me that because of the small number of doctors working in the field. To illustrate, in the entire metropolis of Jerusalem and its surroundings there are only two doctors in this field, the doctor in his clinic I visited in public medicine and another doctor who can be reached privately, when each visit in her clinic costs several hundred shekels which I have no ability to pay, I don't know if she also does home care. For obvious reasons I am not writing here the names of these doctors or the names of the medical institutions where they work. As you know, there is also a subfield in pharmacology called psychiatric pharmacology, and after an examination I made it became clear that the situation in this subfield is even much worse, and in the entire state of Israel there are only one or two doctors at most who deal with this and receive patients. And to sum up, these circumstances lead a person in my situation, who needs the services of a psychiatrist who works at home to a complete dead end, and despite the urgent need to monitor the medications I am taking, I am currently not offered any reasonable solution. I would like to point out that there is indeed a psychiatrist in the therapeutic setting for the mentally injured in the community where I am, however, the employees and management of the setting stubbornly refuse to allow her to stay at home with me, something that could have solved the problem at least temporarily. This refusal was given just like that and without any reason, and in a display of complete indifference to my condition and to the fact that lack of follow-up on the medication may even endanger my life. Anyway I'm still looking for a solution. In this case too, I don't know if receiving an allowance for special services from the National Insurance Institute would be able to help, and if there is or is not a connection between the two things. 6. The family doctor with whom I am being monitored. Dr. Brandon Stewart. Clalit Health Services, the Talit Clinic. 6 Daniel Yanovsky Street. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9338601. The phone number in the clinic offices, 972-2-509-8282. Fax number in the clinic offices, 972-2-673855. See, below is the letter I sent to Professor Manuela Consoni from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. My letters to Professor Manuela Consoni. Manuela.Kanzani at mail.hoji.ac.il. Wednesday, September 28 at 15.08. Hello to Professor Manuela Consoni. Subject, Publication in Italian. Dear Madam. In recent years, I have been participating in the struggle of the disabled in the State of Israel, a struggle that, as you know, is covered extensively in the media in Israel, and in the international media as well. However, in addition to this, the procrastination, the dragging of feet, the neglect and the evasion that the state of Israel uses towards the disabled people's crisis are also well known. For many years the procrastination has been going on, and every authority I turn to answers me along the lines of, it has nothing to do with us or its twin sister, we are not the address. Of course, there are many cases in which no answer is given at all, or alternatively many cases in which disabled people receive very aggressive or threatening answers, for no reason at all and I personally had to suffer this countless times. And in short, today the issue has nothing to do with anyone, no one cares and disabled people who continue to die in the street no longer occupy or trouble the state of Israel. And realizing this unfortunate reality, I turned to many factors outside the state of Israel, to various international organizations and also to private individuals, some of whom I reach even randomly. These appeals have two purposes, 
inviting pressure from the outside on the decision makers in the state of Israel so that they begin to treat the disabled crisis a little more seriously, as well as an attempt to test the potential that there could be for one way or another cooperation between organizations of the disabled in the state of Israel and organizations of the disabled in other countries in the world in order to improve their lives of populations of people with disabilities in the world. As part of these efforts, I was thinking, among other things, of looking for an advertising company, whose main field of business is advertising in the Italian language, from which it would be possible to receive a service of translating the contents of the struggle into Italian, I cannot give up this step, since I do not know Italian even at the most basic level, and in particular for one or two words I have no knowledge of this language, and its distribution in the various social networks, and internet forums in Italy, and of Italian speakers around the world. My question to you is, do you know, or do you know advertising companies from which you can get such a service? I should point out that there is no personal acquaintance between us, I heard about you from the media. Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A-flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9662592. My phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-2700076. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 0295474403. 2. My email addresses, 02954740 at walla.co.il or asb783 at gmail.com or asaf19725 at yahoo.co.il or as.benyamnini at yandex.com or asaf at protonmail.com or asaf002 at mail2world.com. 3. The therapeutic setting I am in. Association Reut, Hostel Avivit. Ha Vivit ST6. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9650816. The phone numbers in the hostel offices. 972-2-6432551 or 972-2-6428351. The email address of the hostel, avivit6 at barak.net.il. 4. The family doctor with whom I am being monitored. Dr. Brandon Stewart. Clallet Health Services, The Promenade Clinic. 6 Daniel Yanovsky Street. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9338601. The phone number in the clinic offices, 972-2-5098282. Fax number in the clinic offices, 972-2-6738551. 5. Additional personal details, age, 50. Marital status, single. Date of birth, November 11, 1972. 2. Whom it may concern. The following is a message on behalf of Mrs. Tatyana Kadakin from the Nitgaber Movement. The subject, the Nitgaber Movement, Transparent Disabled People. About a decade ago, I, the Ham, founded the movement, Nitgaber, for the Transparent Disabled People. Disabled people with high percentages of disability and no ability to work, but who are not limited in movement. My movement counts and represents about 1,300 people from all over the country of Israel, who have a disability ranging from 75% to 100%, who are not fit to work and who do not have a mobility disability or need an increase in their disability percentages. The movement allows those people to find all their rights vis-a-vis -vis the state and certain financial support is also given to those most in need. Our movement fights for affordable public housing and adequate living conditions for the aforementioned population group. Many disabled people who are not able to work, and who have 75% to 100% disability, but are not limited in movement live in deplorable conditions. They do not receive the same benefits that pensioners who also receive income supplementation enjoy. That is, they do not have discounts for buying medicine, discounts on the electricity bill, and property taxes, discounts for traveling in the public transport and rent assistance similar to pensioners, they are not entitled to heating slash cooling, grants and more. In other words, they are entitled to almost no benefits, despite their dire situation. Furthermore, they are also not entitled to public housing despite the difficult conditions they live in every day. There is a fundamental difference between the different disabilities, and we believe that it should not be that way. 
a disabled person with a mobility disability, entitled to public housing and receiving rent assistance ranging from 300 to 3900 NIS per month. Also, disabled people with mobility disabilities receive larger allowances than the disabled people represented by the movement, thanks to additions to the basic allowance, which includes, among other things, special services, a mobility and companion allowance, and more. In such a situation, the size of these allowances reaches NIS 15,000 to 17,000 per month. But in contrast, the disabled represented by the movement, who do not have a mobility disability, have a 75% to 100% disability and are not fit to work, receive only NIS 3211 per month net only. From this it follows that this group is the poorest and most vulnerable population in the state of Israel. During my years of activity, I met with many officials from different parties in the Knesset and in the various government ministries. But, unfortunately, for a decade now, the movement has not succeeded in promoting the proposal that would allow disabled people who are not limited in movement, who have 75 to 100 percent disability and are not able to work, to receive public housing, or at the very least to increase the amount of assistance they receive in renting an apartment and to improve at least a little their living conditions. In light of the above, I, Tatiana Kaduchkin, chairperson of the movement, Nay Tagver, Transparent disabled people, I would like to meet with you, in order to promote this project and help these people live a more dignified and proper life. With blessings and great hope, Tatiana Kaduchkin, chairperson of the movement, Nitgaber, transparent disabled. Phone 1, 972-52-370-8001. Phone 2, 972-3-534-6644. Below is the message I left for Knesset member Mossi Raz Asher for a meeting with him in the Knesset. I arrived on Tuesday, April 20, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. April 20, 2021. Greetings to Knesset, the Israeli parliament, member Mossi Raz. The subject, the problem of housing for the disabled. Dear Sir. Below are a number of topics related to the disabled and mentally challenged population, a population in which I am also included, which I would like to raise before you. I would be interested in knowing to what extent you are able to promote these issues and or make urgent legislative amendments to improve our situation, the conditions of our treatment and our chances of surviving and integrating into society. I should point out that from past experience I have learned that in meetings of this type I will be told before I arrive that I will be given permission to speak in order to raise the issues I wish to speak about, however in the meeting itself I will not be given permission to speak even for one second, and if I try to speak, God forbid, This will be considered automatically for a very serious disturbance, and therefore the security guards will attack me and expel me very aggressively, and this even when there is no need for it and when it is completely unnecessary, and also when it is absolutely clear that I do not pose any danger to anyone. And knowing this reality, I am handing you this letter, just in case this time too, this will be the behavior towards me. Apparently the very fact that I dare to bring up the plight of the disabled public is interpreted as a very serious threat, even though it is not at all clear to me who or what exactly it threatens. I am leaving you and the employees of your office with this letter, I will not take it back to my home. And now for the details of the topics themselves. 1. The problem of financing slash rent payment, many years ago it was determined, and it is not clear by whom. However it is probably one government official or another, that disabled people who live in the community are entitled to assistance in the amount of 770 shekels per month for the purpose of paying rent. As we know, in recent years there has been a very significant increase in apartment prices in the state of Israel, and as a result, of course, there has also been a significant increase in the rent. However, the aid amount of NIS 770, which was determined many years ago completely arbitrarily, and without any explanation or logic, is not being updated. Unfortunately, even after a great deal of correspondence, and we are talking about at least a few thousand or even tens of thousands of letters, and unfortunately for the writer of these words, these numbers are not exaggerated at all, which were sent to every possible party, the Ministry of Construction and Housing and its various branches, other government ministries such as the Ministry of Finance and the Prime Minister's Office, many journalists with whom the writer of this document spoke. Personally, many lawyers and even the investigative offices and embassies of foreign countries, nothing helps, and as a result, the aid amount is not updated, many disabled people are thrown into the street and find their death there from hunger, thirst or cold in the winter and alternatively from heat stroke or dehydration in the summer. It should be noted that organizations for the exploitation of rights such as the Yadid Association, which, as we know, was closed a few months ago, or legal aid clinics at universities and colleges with which the writer of this article is also in contact can never help, and the reason for this is simple, 
the amount of aid of NIS 770 is given according to law, and organizations for the exploitation of rights can only help according to the existing law, and the only address in cases where legislative changes are necessary is, as you know, the Knesset. But here the situation only continues to get complicated, as we know, for a very long period of over two years there is no functioning government in Knesset and the state of Israel is in a state of, in fact, a continuous transitional government. The direct and devastating result of this situation is the lack of possibility to make essential amendments to the law that are urgently required, some of which I detail here. It should be noted that even when the Knesset and the government acted on the requests of the writer of these lines, as well as requests from the organizations of the disabled and many other parties regarding the amount of assistance to the members of the Knesset, they were automatically directed to the organizations for the exploitation of rights. And this even though the members of the Knesset themselves know very well that in this case the organizations for the exploitation rights cannot be the address but only themselves. 2. Communication with the landlords, there are many cases in which disabled people have difficulty negotiating with the landlord due to reasons related to their illness or disability. In these situations, the social workers are required to act as mediators, and a very large part of the social workers cannot really take on this role in every case. And what's more, the extensive cuts in recent years in the standards for the jobs of social workers, combined with the difficult working conditions, the low pay, the inadequate treatment by the families of patients who in many cases see them as, and unjustly, responsible for the poor care their relatives receive, and all of this combined with the impossible workload that sometimes forces them to have no choice but to neglect even urgent or dangerous situations, all these make it even more difficult for the person with the disability to find a suitable apartment and for the social worker to help. 3. Patients' means of payment, there are situations in which a person moves to live in the community after a long period of stay in hospitals, and without living habits that are considered normative such as going to work, taking responsibility for managing his life, etc. Very often requirements that are placed as a condition for signing a lease contract such as signing a guarantee check is unattainable for people at this stage of their lives. Many treatment and rehabilitation frameworks that existed in the past, in one of which the writer of this document was helped about 26 years ago when leaving a hospital for assisted living, have closed or significantly reduced the scope their activity in recent years, something that may prevent rehabilitation from people who at this stage of their lives will not be able to move forward without these essential therapeutic and rehabilitation envelopes. 4. The regulation problem. Today there is a complete imbalance when it comes to the obligations and rights of the apartment owners on the one hand and the apartment renters on the other. There are many laws that protect landlords from one or another abuse of the rental periods that may be on the part of the tenants. On the other hand, there are no laws aimed at protecting the people who live in apartments from being exploited by landlords, and as a result, scandalous, draconian and sometimes even illegal clauses can be found in many rental contracts, and there are no laws aimed at protecting the tenants of these apartments who are forced to sign these contracts. In many cases, the tenants of the apartments do not have a legal right to object to offensive clauses that are signed as a condition for renting the property, and they will be completely exposed to the whims of the owners of the apartments, and sometimes even during the rental period itself. Of course, this problem is for the entire population, however, it should be taken into account that dealing with the landlords in these situations is naturally more difficult for disadvantaged populations such as the disabled or the sick. 5. Difficulty in Advocacy there are considerable difficulties when it comes to raising the mentioned difficulties and exposing them in the public arena for the purpose of making the necessary necessary corrections. The current priorities of the various media which are hardly interested in the issue, fragmentation among the organizations of the disabled, reluctance of many elements of the society in which we live to take an active part in attempts to correct and improve the situation. All these burden and make it very difficult for the efforts to raise these problems to public awareness in a way that will be forced the members of the Knesset to make the necessary amendments to the legislation instead of continuing to ignore and do nothing. Another difficulty exists when it comes to raising an advertising campaign. 6. Waiting time for treatment. There are many cases in which people who up to a certain stage in their lives did not need the help of mental health services at all, but as a result of difficult life circumstances or a traumatic or difficult event of one kind or another need the help of a professional in the field of mental health, and of course in many cases this is temporary or one-off assistance and not chronic. Today, the waiting periods for treatment or psychological assistance are very long, and as a result of the lack of timely help, people's conditions may deteriorate unnecessarily. Investing additional resources in the public mental health system can certainly change the situation. It must be remembered that even from an economic and budgetary point of view there is no logic in such behavior, when people's condition worsens during a prolonged waiting period for treatment, their condition continues to get complicated, 
and what could have been one-off assistance that does cost the state money turns into an even more serious situation that subsequently costs the state a high financial cost infinitely. 7. Dental treatments, as you know, in the state of Israel a person who needs dental treatments will almost always go to private doctors, and this is because the public health system does not currently provide an answer in this area. It should be noted that the mentally challenged, and also the disabled in general, whose economic hardship is very difficult on a day-to-day -day level, even without connection to dental treatments, find it even more difficult to receive these treatments, if and when it is necessary. The combination of serious mental problems and severe economic distress causes these people to face a broken trough and a complete dead end when necessary, and sometimes urgent dental care. It should be taken into account that today there is no, in fact, a systemic solution to an issue that is not treated at all, and one should think about appropriate legislation and the creation of reasonable options when it comes to dental treatments for these populations. 8. Hospitalization areas, a person who currently needs massive psychiatric treatment in a public hospital or clinic can receive it only in a clinic or hospital that is close to his area of residence. There are cases where patients prefer, for one reason or another, to be treated at another clinic, not necessarily the one very close to their area of residence. Patients should be allowed freedom of choice, and a patient who is not satisfied with treatment at a particular clinic or hospital should be given the opportunity to move to a clinic or hospital elsewhere. This option is currently given in all other fields of medicine, and there is no reason to deny the freedom of choice as to the place of treatment in the field of mental treatment only. What's more, such freedom of choice, if given, could certainly cause hospitals and clinics in the field of mental health to compete with each other for patients, something that could definitely lead to better treatment and service. 9. Population awareness, the general population sometimes shows very significant opposition when it comes to mental health treatments that are provided in the area where people live, something that stems from a lack of awareness and lack of recognition of the field, and without any practical or logical justification. Reducing the resistance and reluctance of the population through an appropriate systemic information system may certainly make the lives of patients and patients whose lives are very difficult in any case due to the disease and disability themselves, easier. The lack of awareness in the society in which we live causes cases of residents' objections to the opening of hostels or care facilities near their residences, something that leads to considerable delays in the opening of these facilities, and sometimes even to the prevention of their opening following lawsuits filed by residents. And what's more, there are quite a few cases in which there is intentional harassment of the population towards these care facilities when they are in their area of residence, and it is very possible that raising public awareness could lead to a significant reduction in the number of these cases. Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A Flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9662592. Phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-270076. Post scriptum. 1. My ID number, 0295474043. 2. My email addresses, 0295474043 at wala.co.iler, asb783 at gmail.com. Or, asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il or, s.beniamini at yandex.com or, a 32 asaf at outlook.com or, asaf002 at mail2world.com or, asaf at protonmail.com. 3. The treatment framework I was in until March 16, 2021, due to the continued cuts and reductions in the health and welfare budgets and the lack of treatment of these issues in the absence of a functioning government or Knesset, I am left, chronically ill with very serious diseases and problems without any appropriate treatment framework. All my attempts to find a relevant treatment framework for her I can rely on clay pots, and there is no telling how long this catastrophic situation will last. Association Reut, Hostel Avivit. Ha Avivit ST6. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9650816. The phone numbers in the hostel offices. 972-2-6432551, or... 972-2-6428351. The email address of the hostel, avivit6 at barak.net.il. The social worker from the hostel team, with whom I was in contact. Ashrit 972-50-5857185. 4. The family doctor with whom I am being monitored. 
Dr. Brandon Stewart. Clallet Health Services, The Taylet Clinic. 6 Daniel Yanovsky Street. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9338601. The telephone number of the clinic offices. 972-2-6738558, fax number in the clinic offices, 972-2-6738551. 5. Details of the regular medications I take. Psychiatric drugs. I, Seroquel. 2 pills of 300 mg each every evening. 2. Tegretol CR. 400 mg every morning. 400 mg every evening. 3. Effexor. 150 mg every morning. 150 mg every evening. Simvastatine. 10 mg every day in the evening. 6. Below is the list of medical problems I suffer from. I. Mental illness compulsive syndrome OCD as well as a disease defined as schizoaffective disorder. 2. Psoriatic arthritis. 3. A neurological problem whose definition is not clear. Her main symptoms, objects falling from my hands without me noticing, dizziness, loss of sensation in some areas of the palms and a certain problem with balance and posture. 4. Chronic disc herniation in the back in vertebrae 4 to 5, which also radiates to the legs and makes walking difficult. V. Irritable bowel syndrome. 6. Beginning of signs of a cardiological problem from the last month, I am writing these words on Thursday, March 22, 2018. As of the time of writing these lines, the essence of the problem is still unclear, which is manifested in chest pains during most of the day, difficulties in breathing and also in speaking. 7. A significant weakening of vision, which started approximately six months ago, I am writing these words on Monday, April 19, 2021. 7. Additional personal details, age, 48. Marital status, single. Date of birth, November 11, 1972. D. Below is my correspondence with the Super Farm chain. February 10, 2022. Greetings to the Super Farm chain. In question, an order from the website. Dear Madam slash Sirs. A few hours ago, I am writing this on Sunday, October 2, 2022 at 12.30 p.m. I placed an order for medication on your website. But for unknown reasons I discovered to my surprise that the order was listed as cancelled, even though I did not ask to cancel it at all. So who unilaterally cancelled the order without asking me? And in conclusion, I request that the treatment of my order, for the regular medications that I take as a chronic illness, continue, as mentioned, I did not ask to cancel at all. Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem, zip code 9662592. My phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-2700076. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 029547403. 2. My email address is 029547403 at walla.co.il and asb783 at gmail.com and asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il and s.benyamini at yandex.com and asafbenyami at hotmail.com and asaf at protonmail.com and benyamini at vk.com and asafbenyamini at 163.om. If the medicines are missing only in your warehouse, this does not justify the cancellation of the order by you unilaterally, in such a case, I definitely expect you to bring the medicines from another place or from another store in the network. So I look forward to getting an answer. Asaf Beniamini. On Sunday, October 2, 2022 at 14 colon 53 colon 03 GMT plus 3, Super Farm wrote. The stock is missing in the warehouse from which the shipments depart. If you want to purchase from a branch directly, I recommend that you contact the branch directly or enter a chat with a pharmacist at the following link. https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash 3 xroik. Have a nice day sunflower. Regards. Lipaz. Super Farm Customer Service. Want to enjoy special offers, updates, and personal coupons. 
Click to register here and GT, and GT. By frowny face asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il. Sent 10 slash 2 slash 2022, 202 and 8 seconds p.m. 2. Super Farm, super farm.online at bumpyardpro.com. Topic, re, super farm online. So I still haven't understood, is the stock of medicines missing only in the branch where you work, or is the stock currently missing in the entire network? On Sunday, October 2, 2022 at 13 colon 41 colon 54 GMT plus 3, Superfarm wrote. Hello Asaf. My name is Lipaz from Superfarm. I apologize for the inconvenience, but because the medication you ordered was out of stock, we had to cancel the order. In addition, it is important to me that you know that there is no expected return to the medications, so if they are urgent for you, I would recommend that you try to purchase them through your health insurance fund. Can I help with anything else? Regards. Lipaz. Super Farm Customer Service. Want to enjoy special offers, updates, and personal coupons? Click to register here and GT, and GT. By frowny face asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il. Sent 10 slash 2 slash 2022, 1250 and 47 seconds p.m. To contact us, contact us dash prod at super dash farm.co.il. Topic, Super Farm Online. From email. Asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il. From name. Asaf Beniamini. Contact number. Plus 9725867840. Message. Why was my order cancelled? I did not ask at all to cancel it. And why don't you answer the phone? Regards. Asaf Benjamini. E. Below is a letter that I sent to various places. 2. Subject, Site Inspection. Dear Madam Slash Sirs. I own the site https colon slash slash disability5.com built in a system of wordpress.org, and stored on the servers of servers24.co.il. After running a test of the site in the systems I checker.pro I got the results which you can see by clicking on the following link, https colon slash slash sitechecker.pro slash app slash main slash project slash 3242740 slash audit slash summary. I will point out that since I am not a computer person or a programmer, I do not understand the meanings of what is written in the results of this scan. Therefore, I am looking for a company that is engaged in the dissemination of these digital contents also to people with technological challenges like myself. Do you know such companies? Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A Flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9662592. My phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-2700076. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 0295474403. 2. My email addresses, 02954740 at walla.co.il and asb783 at gmail.com and asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il and asafbenyamini at hotmail.com and as.benyamini at yandex.com and asaf002 at mail2world.com and dash asaf at protonmail.com and benyamini at vk.com and asafbenyamini at 163.com. 3. I will state that I am a person who lives on a very low income, a disability allowance from the National Insurance Institute. Therefore, a high payment to private companies for examining the issue is not possible for me. F below is a letter I sent to various web hosting companies. 2. Subject, Storage Services. Dear Madam Slash Sirs. I own the site https colon slash slash disability5.com built in a system of wordpress.org, and stored on the servers of servers24.co.il. My site has been blocked many times, just like that and for no reason. Every time the site is blocked, I contact the storage company who handles the problem and also solves it, however the problem always repeats itself over and over again. 
almost always the fault is caused by my server's DNS that suddenly do not work properly. Therefore, I would like to see the details of the storage plan I currently have, I don't know how I can do this, and find out if you can offer me a better service. Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A-flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. ISRAELL, zip code 9662592. Phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-2700076. Post scriptum. 1. My ID number, 0295474043. 2. I will mention here a number of things that are important to me personally when it comes to the website hosting service, and this is an exception, of course, regarding the storage space that will be available to me and the financial cost, these are particularly critical things in any website hosting, and so are they for me as well. I. Lack of interference with the contents, on my site I occasionally upload material, in the form of text, images, files of various types, etc., and it is very important to me that the hosting company does not make any changes to the contents of the site without express and unequivocal permission from me, and that too in very exceptional cases only. 2. CDN Service In all the storage services I have subscribed to since forever, I have always used the service of CDN, Content Delivery Network. It is very important to me because the storage package will allow me to continue using this service. 3. Loading Speed it is important to me that the speed of loading the site is as good as possible. In this field there have been many problems recently, I am writing these words on October 3, 2022. 4. SSL Certificate My website currently has such a certificate, and it is very important to me that it continues that way. V. Technical Support Very important to me is technical support at a reasonable frequency and level, preferably in Hebrew, my mother tongue. 6. Content Backup very important to me because there will be an automatic backup of the site as often as possible. 3. There are also several things that are completely unimportant to me. Dear Madam Slash Sirs. I own the multilingual blog https colon slash slash disability5.com which deals with the issues of illness and disability. The blog was built in a system of wordpress.org and stored on the servers of servers24.co.il. I am looking for a website where you can find recordings of lectures that can be used without a copyright problem, similar, for example, to Google Scholar's website in the area of articles. Do you know such a service? Regards. Asaf Beniamini. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A-flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem. Israel, zip code 9662592. My phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Mobile 972-58-6784040. Fax 972-77-2700076. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 0295474043. 2. My email addresses, 02954740 at walla.co.il and asb783 at gmail.com and asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il and s.beniamini at yandex.com and asaf at protonmail.com and beniamini at vk.com and asafbenyamini at 163.com. Here are some product ideas I thought of. 1. As you know, on many websites where users register, there is a regular plan where you can use the free system and at the same time paid plans that have a wider variety of options. The idea I was thinking about, developing a site or system on the internet, which offers a service of joining the paid programs of several sites simultaneously and in a centralized manner, or as they are called, premium programs, and in my opinion the operation of such a model can have several consequences. I, a larger number of surfers, including those who are in financial distress, who will be able to enjoy better services, and a greater variety of online options. 2. In this way, to do a kind of, digital justice, giving many options to underprivileged populations on the net, whose use of many websites and services today is blocked due to too high a financial cost. 
3. The website owners themselves will be able to benefit from a larger number of subscribers to the premium plans, and consequently also an increase in revenue, for the simple reason that no website owner or system will join such an arrangement without proven economic viability, and within the framework of such an economic model, the company or website that operates the centralized program, the payments will be transferred to the website owners themselves, who will thus essentially become a type of subcontractors. 4. Of course, such a model also has disadvantages, communication of the end user with the website system which may be cumbersome and more difficult, an excuse that will be given to the website owners themselves to provide less good service knowing that in this situation they will be able to remove responsibility from themselves and refer the end user to the company that operates all the programs in a centralized manner. In this situation, the company that is responsible for centrally operating all the premium programs may refer the end user back to the company that is supposed to provide the service directly, which in turn will refer users again to the company that is responsible for centrally operating the premium programs, and God forbid. I wonder if there is currently a website or software on the internet that offers such a service, and if it is indeed worthwhile or profitable for the three parties involved in the transaction, the companies that operate the same premium plans of different websites in a centralized manner, the companies that provide or offer the services themselves, and of course also the end users who consume the service. The question also arises as to whether the implementation of such a model can have a positive or negative effect on the field of network security, or that the effects may be different in any field of activity, writing code, systems for building websites, recording videos, browsers, word processors, etc. And of course the question arises as to whether or not studies have been conducted on this, and I apologize in advance for my ignorance, Asaf Bainiamini, the questions drafter. The writer of these questions is not an economist or a programmer and they may turn out to be ridiculous or stupid. 2. In various areas where people live there is a nuisance of various types of insects that disrupt lifestyles, such as locust swarms that damage agricultural crops, areas where there are many wooden houses that are damaged by termite swarms, etc. The question arises as to whether the military technology that exists today allows the production of weapons in the form of tiny, artificial insects that will operate under remote control, on the same principle that drones operate on, that can carry explosives and operate in areas where the real insects are found that the area suffers from on a regular basis. For example, in areas that suffer in routine times, termite invasions produce their electronic counterparts in a way that is outwardly similar to their real counterparts, thus making it difficult for the enemy to identify them, because of course, as much as this tiny weapon is similar to the real insect, it will not arouse suspicion and surprise the enemy from an unexpected direction. Another use of such a means can of course also be in the field of intelligence, instead of sending flesh and blood spies and risking their lives choose to send those insects with tiny transmitters or cameras that will bring information about what is happening with the enemy, and of course they must include a mechanism of self-destruction in case they are caught or discovered. The question arises here as to whether such weapon systems actually exist in different armies in the world, and if the technology that exists today does indeed make it possible to produce such weapons or intelligence. Or that the production of such a weapon, even if it is technologically possible, is not carried out in practice for a variety of other reasons, the economic cost is too high, geopolitical reasons of one kind or another and or international treaties of one kind or another because of which the launch of such a product is prevented. Of course, there is always the fear that if and when such a measure is developed, or is already developed today, it will trickle down in one way or another to problematic regimes, criminal organizations, or terrorist organizations. And a final clarification, Asaf Bainiamini, the writer of this document is not an expert in military technology or technology in general, and in this document I am sharing my personal thoughts only, and nothing beyond that. 3. As we know, a social phenomenon that is both despicable and serious has been increasing in recent years, violence that is used against various medical teams, in the hospitals and clinics located in the community. It is possible that the solution to this difficult social phenomenon could come from a completely unexpected direction, wearable computing. The intention is to develop a kind of folding robotic arm that will be provided to staff members in clinics who will wear it under the doctor's or nurse's gown, and that those staff members will be able to activate it at the exact moment when they are attacked. The idea is that the same kind of robotic arm will be able to hold the rioting patient in place and prevent him from causing significant damage, until the arrival of the security forces or the police. The system must include another mechanism for loosening the grip on the rioting patient and handing him over to the police. Of course, such a product will have to fulfill some necessary conditions. I. The operating mechanism, both for the withdrawal of the robotic arm when dealing with the problematic patient and in the phase of releasing him from it after the arrival of the policeman must be very simple to be activated by pressing only one button by the same medical staff member. 
2. During an attack, the mechanism must operate at a very fast speed of only a fraction of a second. 3. In order to prevent abuse of the system, it must be determined by law who are the parties who are allowed to use it, and only they will receive access to it from the public system. At the same time, it should be prohibited to market it privately as goods passing to the merchant and heavy prison sentences should be imposed on anyone who violates this prohibition. 4. This system should be lightweight and very comfortable for the medical staff to wear, and it should also have the ability to be produced in different sizes so that it can be used, for example, medical staff members of different heights or weights, women and men, etc. V. As we know, there are cases where one medical staff member has to deal with more than one person rioting in an emergency room or in a clinic or another department, therefore any such system must also have the ability to pull out several arms at the same time in order to neutralize several people at the same time. Of course, here too, the operating mechanism will have to be very simple, and also operate at a very fast speed of only a fraction of a second. 6. And another condition, no less necessary, establishing penalties, and even to the extent of revoking a license to practice the profession for medical staff members who make unjustified or disproportionate use of this system. For example, in cases where there is no attack or danger to the medical staff and they have to deal with a patient who is angry, and even raises his voice and shouts, however, no one is actually at risk. Likewise, also when it comes to a snoozy patient who repeats the same statement or request over and over again, and this greatly irritates certain staff members, after all, even in such cases, a medical staff member who makes excessive or disproportionate use of such a system, and there will be those irritating or insolent patients however they may be. Of course, the question also arises as to whether opening such a product and then producing and marketing it in such large quantities is indeed possible with the technologies that exist today. 4. As you know, sometimes there are entrepreneurs who come up with an idea for a startup, an innovative service, etc. Of course, one of the first questions that arise, apart from the thoughts about the idea itself, is the inevitable question, is the idea that I just thought of something that someone else has already thought of before. The challenge is to develop software or a system on the internet, in which the entrepreneur can fill in several fields regarding the characteristics of the innovative idea in general terms. After typing, the system scans the major search engines on the internet, Google, Yahoo, Bing, etc., and at the end of the scan, the idea creator will be given an answer as to whether it is something that already exists or not. It should be noted that the writer of these lines, Asaf Bainiamini, is not a programmer or a professional, therefore he has no information on whether such software or system already exists or not. 5. As you know, in the state of Israel there are occasionally large events that cause extensive damage to a very large number of business owners. The reference is, for example, to the events of a military campaign when missiles are fired at the territory of the country and as a result the business is shut down involuntarily and accumulates huge financial losses, widespread epidemics because of which the business is forced to reduce its activity for an extended period and more. When these business owners request that the state of Israel compensate them for all these damages, they are caught up in a long and exhausting bureaucratic procedure during which they are asked to present a lot of documents and paperwork. The challenge is the development of software or a computerized system, in which those business owners will be able to fill in the designated places various data about the business's activity such as, the cash flow of the business on normal days, the extent of the damage caused, etc. In this way, it may be possible to shorten and streamline the bureaucratic process. Of course, in the development of such a system, several things must be taken into account. I, the work will not involve only the technological challenge. At the same time, there will be a need for work in the field of public relations, law, and politics in order to obtain cooperation on a large scale from authorities such as the Ministry of Finance, the Tax Authority, etc., without which the execution of such a project would be impossible. 2. After the system is in place, it will be necessary to implement it on the website of the Ministry of Finance in order to increase its efficiency. Its use must be offered freely and free of charge. 3. The system must also include an artificial intelligence-based filter for the purpose of detecting imposters who try to abuse the mechanism that bypasses the bureaucracy it offers. 4. In all phases of the work there will be a need for continuous contact with state authorities such as the Ministry of Finance and the Tax Authority. It is also very important for the employers' organizations to participate so that they raise their comments and draw the attention of the developers regarding procedures or procedures in the field that may not have been properly understood by the system developers or those that the programmers were not even aware of their existence. V. The system must include a mechanism that will allow such or other changes to be made from time to time that may be necessary in view of a changing reality. 
Of course, the ability to make such changes cannot be open to the general public but only to certain factors that will be agreed upon by the employers' organizations in the economy on the one hand, and the state authorities such as the Ministry of Finance and the Tax Authority on the other. 6. And another thing that must be taken into account, a certain part of the business owners, like the public in general, does not have sufficient technological literacy to use such a system when needed independently. Therefore, the company that will develop the venture will have the obligation to recruit the positions of a kind of technological brokers on its behalf, and this is to try and prevent a situation in which business owners of this or that will not be able to receive the compensation they deserve due to the lack of access to the necessary digital resources such as a computer, a suitable cell phone, etc. b. The options for establishing contact with these technological intermediaries must be very flexible, contact by telephone, contact on a social network, contact by email, and this according to the preferences of the business owners who apply and or constraints of the situation or reality in which these businesses find themselves. 7. After the implementation of the system on the website of the Ministry of Finance in the network, it is necessary to create a customer service center in regards to users who will encounter difficulties in regards to using it. 8. Since, as is well known, each disaster or event can have unique characteristics that do not exist in other disasters or events, there is a necessity to appoint a forum in which representatives of the state authorities and employers in the economy will be members, and this in order to discuss, when necessary, changes in the way that customer service operates in accordance with the unique characteristics of each event and event and the changing reality. The writer of these words, Asaf Bainiamini, is not a professional, an economist, a computer programmer or has any experience or knowledge in the business world, and these words are written as a suggestion or ideas that the writer of these words has thought about, and nothing beyond that. 6. Challenge in the field of design. When a military system occurs, populations that do not take part in the campaign seek shelter in order to protect their lives. However, when it comes to the disabled, the situation is complicated and very difficult, disabled people who have difficulty with mobility, with or without a wheelchair, often cannot run to the shelter or even walk fast enough to enable them to reach the shelter in time for the purpose of saving life. The task is to develop a kind of facility inside the residential apartment, which will be flexible and very simple to set up when needed, and on the other hand, strong enough to protect the disabled person's life from stones falling from a collapsing roof or shrapnel from shells or ammunition of one kind or another. This system will have to include, at the same time as the necessary protection of the disabled person's life, also the possibility of calling for help after the collapse of the building, because if the disabled person is not injured and remains alive, he will not be able to get out of the ruins independently, which a person with two healthy and functioning legs can certainly do. 7. Establishing a social network, which will be intended for uploading quotes of any type and without limitation from across the network. The users of this network will be divided into two types, people who upload the quotes, and people who comment on them. All new users in this network will have to define when opening the account if they intend to upload quotes, or if they intend to respond to quotes that other users upload. 8. As you know, there are many contests and in different places for quality, beautiful and spectacular content on different platforms around the web. But what about competitions that go in the opposite direction? And the meaning, the establishment of websites, social networks, or any other online platform where a competition will be held between different users for uploading ugly, bad or shocking content, photos or video clips. In any such contest, the user can upload content that he finds shocking, ugly, or as bad as possible, and the user who uploads the worst content will win. Of course, such a competition can be conducted according to many models, the wisdom of the masses, a team of judges composed of the founders of these sites, etc. 9. In the process of creating a motion picture, a script is written, and then there are many stages in locating actors, production, and everything involved. I wonder if it is possible with the technologies that exist today to develop a system, which will, know based on the initial data of a script and plot to develop a completely complete motion picture using artificial intelligence. And I mean the same principle according to which there are currently systems like Jasper.ai that, know, how to write articles according to keywords. I, below is an email that I sent to various places. 2. Subject, Distributing Blog Content Dear Madam Slash Sirs I own the multilingual blog Disability5.com built on the WordPress.org platform and stored on the servers of servers24.co.il. The blog deals with the issue of people with disabilities, and I am looking for technological tools with the help of which I can distribute its content on the network as widely as possible. I would like to point out that I live on a very low income, 
a disability allowance from the National Insurance Institute, so paying for distribution services is not possible for me. I am interested in knowing what solutions can be found in this state of affairs. Regards. Asaf Biniamin. 115 Costa Rica Street. Entrance A-flat 4. Kiryat Munekim. Jerusalem, zip code 9662592. Telephone numbers, byte, 02-6427757. Mobile, 058-6784040. Fax, 077-2700076. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 02954740. 2. Link to my blog, https, forward slash forward slash disability5.com. 3. The blog is a multilingual blog in 67 languages, Uzbek, Ukrainian, Urdu, Azeri, Italian, Indonesian, Icelandic, Albanian, Amharic, English, Estonian, Armenian, Bulgarian, Bosnian, Burmese, Belarusian, Bengali, Basque, Georgian, German, Danish, Dutch, Hungarian, Hindi, Vietnamese, Tajik, Turkish, Turkmen, Telugu, Tamil, Greek, Yiddish, Japanese, Latvian, Lithuanian, Mongolian, Malay, Maltese, Macedonian, Norwegian, Nepali, Swahili, Sinhalese, Chinese, Slovenian, Slovak, Spanish, Serbian, Hebrew, Arabic, Pashto, Polish, Portuguese, Filipino, Finnish, Persian, Czech, French, Korean, Kazakh, Catalan, Kyrgyz, Croatian, Romanian, Russian, Swedish and Thai. 4. My email address is 02954740 at wala.co.il and asb783 at gmail.com and asaf197254 at yahoo.co.il and s.beniamini at yandex.com and asaf002 at mail2world.com and asafbenyamini at hotmail.com and asaf at protonmail.com and Benyamini at vk.com and asafbenyamini at 163.com. J. Below is the message, which I published on the Facebook page of Spring Therapeutic Garden. Asaf Benjamin. August 10, 2022. 2. Spring Therapeutic Garden. On Friday, October 7, 2022, at noon, the guide Verdon was at my apartment in the morning, and I received a message from him about an event at the hostel to which I am invited and which is to take place this coming Monday at noon, namely, on Sukkot. However, when I asked about the type of event, I did not receive any kind of answer from Morden. And since, as we know, decisions cannot be made based on the absence of relevant information, I would like to ask, what type of event is this? Who organizes it? What are the goals of this event? And why am I invited to it? I would appreciate it if you could explain what things are supposed to mean. Regards. Asaf Binyamini Deer from the sheltered housing of the hostel. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 02954740. 2. My phone numbers, at home, 972-2-6427757. Cellular, 972-58-6784040. 3. I am sending you this message by fax, and this is because the messages I am trying to send to the hostel's email address of ivit6 at barak.net.il are not delivered to their destination and returned to me one by one. 4. Has the hostel's email address been changed or replaced? And if so, can you give me the current and correct email address of the hostel? In any case, if you are not ready to give me this information, I would be interested to know the reasons for this. 5. I would like to emphasize that this message is not being sent by mistake, and I am sending it after all other means of communication with the hostel of Ivit team are not working, and also the facts I sent in this regard to the number 972-2-6432551 does not pass and was not delivered to its destination. K. Below is the message I sent to various places. 2. Subject, Contact Details Problem. Dear Madam Slash Sirs. I am being treated in a community that supports the mentally injured in the community of Reut organization as part of Sal Shikam, and occasionally I receive a home basket from the framework that accompanies me on behalf of the Avivit hostel. Lately I'm having a strange problem, all means of contacting the framework do not work, emails I send to avivit6 at barak.net.il are not delivered to their destination and return to me one after the other, even when I try to send a fax message. 
to the number 972-2-6432551 when the messages are not delivered to their destination and also come back to me. I should point out that in addition to my mental problems, I also suffer from a severe physical disability, and it is very difficult to the point of being impossible for me to physically come to the hostel building whenever there is a message that I would like to give them. 5. In any case, I am waiting for explanations. Greetings to the Avivit hostel team. On Friday, October 7, 2022, at noon, the guide Verdon was at my apartment in the morning, and I received a message from him about an event at the hostel to which I am invited, and which is to take place this coming Monday at noon, namely, on Sukkot. However, when I asked about the type of event, I did not receive any kind of answer from Morden. And since, as we know, decisions cannot be made based on the absence of relevant information, I would like to ask, what type of event is this? Who organizes it? What are the goals of this event? And why am I invited to it? I would appreciate it if you could explain what things are supposed to mean. Regards. Asaf Benyamini a resident from the sheltered housing of the hostel. Postscriptum. 1. My ID number, 029547403. 2. My phone numbers, at home 972-2-6427757. Cellular 972-58-6784040. M. Here are some of my links https colon slash slash sites dot google dot com slash view slash sh lily bears head slash percent sign d seven percent sign nine one percent sign d seven percent sign nine nine percent sign d seven percent sign aa https colon slash slash anchor dot fm slash asaf dash benjamin i company servers twenty four https colon slash slash sites dot google dot com slash view slash rayonat online slash percent sign d seven percent sign nine one percent sign d seven percent sign nine nine percent sign d seven percent sign aa https colon slash slash www dot youtube dot com slash channel slash u c x one seven e m v k f w y l v j n q n nine q l z r g https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equal sign abxtp 51 crzs https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equal sign tnlee 5 kid k4 https colon slash slash shavivim dot co dot il slash two zero two one slash zero seven slash two two slash percent sign d seven percent sign nine zero percent sign d seven percent sign a zero percent sign d seven percent sign nine nine dash percent sign d seven percent sign nine c percent sign d seven percent sign nine zero dash percent sign d seven percent sign nine zero percent sign d seven Percent sign nine five percent sign D seven percent sign nine B percent D seven percent nine C percent D seven percent A A dash percent D seven percent ninety nine percent D seven percent nine E percent D seven percent ninety nine percent D seven percent nine D dash percent D seven percent and nine percent D seven percent nine C percent D seven percent nine E percent D seven percent ninety nine percent d7 percent 9d dash percent d7 percent a percent d7 percent 9b percent d7 percent 99 percent d7 percent a8 percent d7 percent 95 dash percent d7 percent 90 percent d7 percent a dash percent d7 percent 94 percent d7 percent a zero percent d7 percent 9b percent d7 percent 99 percent d7 percent 9d slash https forward slash forward slash soundcloud.com slash user 912428455 utm underscore source equals clipboard and amp utm underscore medium equals text and amp utm underscore campaign equals social underscore sharing